Greetings to you from Virage Number 1. Stories about legends it is series about most iconic cars in the world. This episode is about Audi RS6 C5. When the first Audi RS6 launched in 2002, the RS badge was in its infancy. Just two cars had worn it previously, the RS2 and RS4, both sold only as estates. The C5 RS6 was sold as both a saloon and a bond, though fast Audis have always been intrinsically linked with the latter body style. In this model's case, you can possibly thank pre-bond Daniel Craig in Layer Cake for that. It was a perfect bit of car casting for a cool gangster type, a hugely characterful and quite naughty car clothed in a crisp, subtle body. Many years after its introduction, we'd argue this RS6 is more appealing than ever. And with prices of good C5s starting at $13,000, about the same as specking ceramic brakes on a current Audi RS6, it looks temptingly attainable, too. The RS6 launched with a twin-turbo 4.2-liter V8, co-developed with Cosworth in the UK, producing 444 brake horsepower. That was enough for a 4.9 second 0 to 100 km per hour time and the 250 km per hour limited top speed so associated with German performance cars. It was also enough to seriously outmuscle the contemporary BMW M5 and Mercedes E55 AMG. The power wars between RS, M and AMG had truly started. And back then, Audi was your only option if you wanted your German sports saloon or estate with four-wheel drive. Towards the end of the RS6's life, Audi saw fit to boost its power output, launching the 473 horsepower plus version. Its 0-100 is the same, but its top speed a more Autobahn-friendly 280 km per hour. There was also lowered suspension, sharper steering and some nice anthracite 19-inch alloys. The RS6 wasn't just a hot rod with some boot space, though. There's plenty of interesting tech beneath its irresistible wheel arches. Quattro AWD with a proper torsion differential. A 5-speed Tiptronic automatic gearbox. An intricately set-up dynamic ride control hydraulic suspension system and so on. Want one? Prepare yourself to be patient, Audi sold 870 C5 generation RS6 Avents, 271 saloons, and 77 Avant Pluses. So numbers on the second-hand market are pretty small. Overall, this is an utterly beguiling car. And it feels so relevant today. Its performance hasn't been hugely outstripped, it's still good to drive, and the interior is laid out in a way that, obsolescence of teletext excluded, doesn't feel its age. Given this generation of Audi A6 debuted in the mid-1990s, that's seriously impressive. The materials are top-notch, too. This plus boasts some beautifully weaved carbon fiber and a suede and leather seats. This thing flings itself down a road with a pace as indecent feeling as the 600 horsepower C7 RS6. Seriously. Don't go thinking you need to heave on the brakes and shed all that speed to have a vague hope of making it around a corner, though. RS Audis may not have the most prolific hit rate of dynamic success, but this isn't a car that immediately flops into understeer. In fact, get the nose tucked into a corner and, as you get back on the throttle, it feels almost like a bigger, fatter Impreza. You can sense power going to the rear axle to propel you out the other side. Glance down at the speedometer and the numbers aren't quite as high as they'd be in the newer car, but the sensation of relentless acceleration is the same. For a car that's so mature in premise, its kicks are brilliantly childish. There's the slightest bit of turbo lag when you first prod the accelerator, then a huge surge of power. And it'll happily rev right up to 7,000 RPM, a classy 8-cylinder burble providing a backdrop to it all. No matter your previous performance car experience, it'll make you smile. Really ambitious cornering speeds will see a flicker of the traction control light, and on the tight, leafy lanes of Britain, I imagine the moments I'd feel brave enough to find the off switch in a car this large would be few. But for all its size from the outside, you don't feel it on the inside. A C7 RS6 would have you thumping over the cat's eyes to keep a nice distance from the curb, but in comparison, this feels impossibly narrow. 
As a result, I'd argue you'll use more of its performance, more of the time. A special mention for the steering. It's super, quick, intuitive, and reasonably well-weighted. Whether it felt this good when new I don't know, car journalists tend to enjoy moaning about steering more than anything else, but given how light on feel modern electric systems have become, this now feels fantastic. It rides well, too, that dynamic ride control system doing wonders to shake off some of the worst road surfacing Britain has to offer. There's a bit more squidge in its tires than modern fast German stuff, too, owing to its 19-inch wheels. Though they fill the RS6's arches wonderfully. Complaints? The automatic transmission does not react quickly enough when you manually pull the paddles, but, nor is it quite clever enough when left to its own devices. It may feel as exciting as a newer RS6, but by God, have gearboxes come along since the early 2000s. Though the simplicity of 5 speeds rather than the modern trend for 8 or 9 is a surprise pleasure. If you plan on frequently driving this thing briskly, you might also want to upgrade the brakes. It only took a few passes for the cornering shots in this gallery for them to start to whiff a little bit, and this was at appropriate road speeds. All the weight it shrugs off in a straight line still needs to be slowed down. The availability of a television with teletext would have struck me as witchcraft back in 2002. Of course nowadays, the whole infotainment system doesn't really work, to the extent you're better off suckering your phone to the dashboard and using it for navigation, media and so on, but that's okay. This is 17-year-old technology, remember. Audi has always been especially good at interiors, making them feel solid, well-wearing and unlikely to fall to pieces. The RS6 is no exception, admittedly this particular car has done very few miles, but a well-looked-after car ought to age pretty well, regardless of how many miles it's done. This generation of RS6 launched as an Avant, with the four-door saloon following later, so of course it's massively spacious and practical. Families of five are easily accommodated, as is all their luggage. Back in the day prices kicked off below $76,000 before options, of which there were many. Nowadays, you can spec an RS3 up to that level. Without stating the obvious, it's important that a car like this has been looked after properly. That means a service every 12 months, with the cam belt changed every 5 years, or 40,000 miles. The water pump ought to be changed at the same time. The gearbox needs its oil and filter changing every 40,000 miles, too. And given the work they're tasked with, expect brake pads to last 10,000 to 15,000 miles on the front. There's some considerable mass to slow down, after all. A set of discs and pads comes in at around $1,300. Audi's dynamic ride control system is a mechanical take on adjustable dampers, used to counteract pitching and rolling during cornering. Great when it works, but the system can leak. Opposite corners of the car work off each other, so you need to replace both, though Sam Townsend of VAG Tech says you should also update the other side of each axle. In short, one fails, you replace all four which is $2,500 before fitting, at a dealer with specialist equipment. I put Bilstein's on mine, he says, citing them as an alternative, aftermarket fix. You get better handling, and it's all adjustable, and you get a lifetime warranty. Run it on Shell V Power, fill it with Castrol Edge, only use genuine parts and make sure you let someone who knows what they are doing work on it, says Sam. They also eat tires. Sam says the tires you fit really ought to be a premium brand, too. Cheaper alternatives can rub against the suspension. Any other advice? Make sure you live near a petrol station. We can concur. Our few days in the RS6 saw the trip computer read 19 liters to 100 kilometers, and that included a few stints on the motorway. An 82-liter fuel tank makes it more manageable, but also ensures fills will not be cheap. The cheapest C5 RS6S sit below $13,000, but will likely have north of 100,000 miles on them. No real issue if they've been looked after and appropriately serviced, of course, the build quality here is strong. 
pay 14,000 upwards and you should get a car with a full history and sub 100, 000 miles. Just be aware that the VW up price does not mean similar running costs. Maintenance costs have been astronomical, expect $1,000 bills each year, says Sam. If you want an RS6 Plus, these start at around $19,000, with the best, touching $25,000. As we went to press, there were a few C5 RS6S priced higher than this, but these really need to be fine examples, as 31000 and up takes you into 2nd gen, D10 powered RS6 territory. Thank you for attention! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page and stay tuned for the next story from Barrage Number 1.